This is Frontier Opening Bell, a program of our Frontier Africa Reports here with us on the show this morning. This Monday, the 11th of January 2021, we've got Ali Kansachu, the Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Rich Frontiers Management at Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you for joining us this morning. And of course, Joshua Adabisi, a banking analyst with Vetiver Capital Management. And Akinson De Suleiman, who is a research analyst with Greenwich Merchant Bank in Nigeria. I'm Temple Ashaju. Together, let's get our hands dirty this morning with the stories that we have. But before we do that, let's quickly look at the numbers uh, that reflect the status of the market from last week. Nigeria was negative weekly by 0.37%. Uh, percent Ivory Coast, which is the BRVM market representing the francophone market for the regional francophone market in West Africa, was down by 92 basis points uh, of Friday. And Egypt was positive on a weekly basis down by 99 basis points, the 0.99 percent. Kenya positive by some 0.16 percent as a Friday. And South Africa, JSE, was on Friday positive as well, rose by 0.76 percent. But let's move on now to uh, the stories from East Africa, which is our first port of call. Kenya FX reserves is down by one billion dollars uh, to seven point seven five billion dollars in uh, de December twenty twenty. The NSA weekly turnover rose to uh, some seven point one four percent to uh, some one point five billion Kenyan shillings. And of course, IFC, uh, subsidiary of the World Bank, now uh, to pump some one point zero nine six billion. Uh, Kenyan shilling and PA funds to uh, ascend uh, Rift Valley Fund uh, 2. Cooperative banks is a, has given some kind of a profit warning, and of course, Ethiopian Central Bank, okay, Hermes Andage as the third president of Enet Bank. Uh, let's begin, as usual, with uh, analysis from Kenya, and that's we start with Ali, who's going to be talking to us about these stories. Uh, Ali, uh, what do you make of the uh, decline in the FX reserves in the Kenyan central in Kenyan's FX reserves is was down by one billion dollars, but has now risen to some eight point something billion dollars as of the third of January. What's going on in that decline? So I, I think uh, that that headline is doing a one year comparison between December twenty twenty and December twenty nineteen. And uh, I, I think uh, there was an erosion of, of, of you know, just shy of a billion dollars in that reporting period. Um, interestingly, remittances have been very much above trend. Uh, they gained uh, uh, in single digit percentage terms year on year, which, which supported uh, the FX reserves. But we've had a number of scenarios. We've had the central bank defending the shilling a little bit. Um, uh, and we've had a sharp slowdown in tourism earnings last year, as you can imagine. That is one of the three pillars of the economy <clears throat> and was largely at zero um, through the first half and is still very, very uh, deflated. And I'm not expecting a recovery, frankly, till the fourth quarter of this year. So. You have to contextualize it. Uh, there's some concerns. The uh, Business Daily was leading with a front page today saying the IMF is demanding that Kenya includes parastatal debt and other state-owned enterprise uh, type uh, debt in the official debt to GDP number, which would take it over 100%. Um, so there are lots of issues surrounding the Kenyan situation right now. Um, and it clearly looks as if uh, we're going to be knocking on the door of the IMF in the first quarter. NSE weekly turnover rising 7.14%, 1.5 billion shillings, pretty anemic uh, turnover. That's about 15, 15 and a half million dollars. So uh, the market has not started with a big trading uh, burst. It's been a rather quiet start to the year so far. Co-op Bank, uh, they issued a profits warning. Frankly, every single bank at the Nairobi Securities Exchange is going to be issuing a profits warning. It's just a question of the timing. Um, they've all been hit, been hit in various different ways. Uh, some look more resilient than others. Uh, Equity Bank, probably the most resilient of the tier one banks. But Co-op Bank, basically, uh, following what will be a pattern of profits warnings, I'm afraid, 
Ethiopia Central Bank, uh, the appointment there, the challenge for the Ethiopians, given the political volatility and the ongoing uh, instability, will be maintaining the value of the currency, um, which I'm not bullish about, and I expect uh, a pretty dramatic slide in that currency going through this year. All right, thank you so much, Ali. Let's quickly shift gears now to the West African markets and, of course, Nigeria and the spotlights. Um, we've got our guys from uh, the uh, Greenwich Merchant Bank and, of course, uh, Vetiva uh, Capital Management now to speak to these two uh, to stories that we have in this region. Um, NSE inaugurating claims uh, review panel on demutualization. And, of course, QTX PLC sees some higher revenues of uh, some 1.665 billion naira. Uh, Abbey Mortgage Bank has opened the rights issue. GF Holdings is buying some 474.6 million shares of ICO. Uh, of course, we noticed some kind of uptrend in uh, uh, ICO shares in, re in recent times. Then you have Ghana Securities and Exchange Commission uh, assuring investors that had invested in some 22 companies, 22 fund management companies, that they will get their funds back. Um, let's begin with Joshua. Joshua DBC, what's your pick out of the stories and how significant is it to you at Vetiva? Well, I think just starting from the top, you know, where we see more progress being made on the NFC demutualization, I think obviously this is a very exciting um, story to some extent, obviously because we've been anticipating when demutualization was going to be complete and when the NFC will be listed on the exchange. Now, um, all these committees that need to be set up, all these processes that need to be followed are sort of just I think more formalities, but hopefully we're, you know, sort of slowly ambling towards the point where we will see, you know, the full demutualization of the exchange and the listing of the entity that is the Nigerian Stock Exchange on the exchange itself. Um, going down, I think it's very interesting to note that QTIX is reporting um, increased revenue. Um, I think this is mostly down to the fact that there has been a lot of, in terms of policy, a lot of push to um, sort of, you know, increase distribution and transmission. And since they supply armored cables and the like, there will obviously be a significant demand for, for their materials and their products. And so they're a little bit, you know, recession-proof in that sense because, you know, the federal government's whole policy sort of hinges on the idea of increasing transmission, increasing distribution, and obviously you need a lot of wires, a lot of cables, and a lot of those things to be supplied in order to, you know, boost boost all of that. So I think those are two very, very big and interesting stories that, you know, we should sure. keep an eye on. Sure. I mean, they've also talked about the acquisition of Ad Switch. We didn't know for some of uh, a few calendar years now that has been in the offing. Uh, we can't really confirm if that has been uh, uh, confirmed, uh, if that has been done or not, if it's been uh, accomplished or otherwise. But that's something that we'll continue to keep track of. Uh, Aki, today, let's get your buying on our big, our big mortgage bank uh, opening some 3.69 billion rights issue and the DF Holdings uh, purchasing of some shares of ICO um, at one Naira 17 cup of a share. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, for Abbey Mortgage Bank, um, it's it's a good one because um, it gives them more capital base to for investment and um, uh, creating assets to um, to their stakeholders. Uh, what 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 this will do is um, it will it will help. Uh, more and more individuals that seek to create um, or that seek to get um, uh, mortgage uh, facilities from 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 them, and it will show off their capital. So it it is is positive for them. Um, I think this is going to it it it's on already, and it closes about uh, I think uh, on, on the on the eleventh of February, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's 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 uh, for it's for new shares for um, seven um, seven. Uh, previous audience. So I think it's good for shareholders as well. Um, if you buy on, if you take on your rights, it's, um, it's a solid investment for you. Uh, going into going and the, the price, the price is way below. Uh, it's about, um, I think 80 cobo and um, the, the shares is currently about uh, over, over one naira. So that's, that's, that's solid investment for, um, for, for, for the shareholders. Going into ICO, uh, we, uh, we saw DF uh, purchase um, huge quantities last week. Uh, it was really active for ICO um, in the last trading week. Uh, this, this, this is significant because the, the owner of, um, of uh, 
DF, which is uh, Chief Dele, it, it will be it will be at the moment. I think the majority shareholder is having over fifty percent um holding in ICO already. So that's that's some um, restructuring for ICO, and because um the their capital base is solid, we've been seeing a lot of uptick in their price over the over the past um one year throughout twenty twenty. They saw some solid um um appreciation in price. So it's 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 solid for shareholders. We've been looking at how this uh, would 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 revolution analyze their way of um of treating insurance and their general business as a whole all right bosun uh quickly let's have you touch on the story from ghana securities and exchange commission uh that relates to the 20 companies that were uh um are revoked their licenses were revoked by the securities and exchange commission sometimes in november last year i, I mean how much of confidence does this give to investors in that market I think it's a, I think it's confidence. Thank you. I think it's a confidence building thing. The um, uh, some of these uh, reforms had been taking place before the general elections, uh, the presidential elections, which was he held um, uh, late last year. But now it looks like the SEC is still moving on to uh, to to close the books, as it were. It's a whole lot of getting uh, investors some money back from these uh, close funds management managers there were quite a whole lot of them that the authorities uh, are closed down try to sanitize the Ghanaian market try to take a whole lot of ponzi and illegal unauthorized fund managers out out of the market it's a, it's a total clean out uh in-house cleansing as it were that uh, the the Ghana SEC did and i think so far they've done a good job uh, they try to get everybody on board to repay them. Some of them that got initial promissory notes, the government said they should take cash, present those uh, uh, promissory notes, and at no discount at all. And that's the beauty of it for me, looking at that scenario. The government said there's no discount on those promissory notes. So they are, they, those promissory notes were paid at full value even though they've issued those uh, promissory notes before. And I think that's one good thing for the uh, Ghana market. We have whichever you're looking, whether you're looking in for as a portfolio investors into the market, we are looking into the Ghanaian market uh, as, a, uh, as a multilateral uh, lending agency. I recall clearly that sometimes last year, some folks were intending to take their funds from Nigeria to Ghana. Some did eventually, but then they got stuck. They couldn't repatriate their dividends and their profits. Uh, so perhaps uh, this is something that will be able to help them get their funds back to Nigeria uh, eventually. Let's drive now further to South Africa, uh, where, of course, the um, SA ABSA manufacturing PMI fell to 50.3 for December 2020, uh, supposed to, uh, or versus 52.6. Uh, in November. Then, of course, Catrack to exit JSE to list on US NASDAQ. And Accentuate, uh, Accentuate Limited is the listing from JSE Alternative Exchange on the 26th of this month. SABC retrenchment process completed. And now some 303 jobs are to be affected, as opposed to 600 uh, jobs that had initially been earmarked for that purpose. Now, Zambian Stock Exchange is brick make a uh, uh, will deal a uh, full year revenue is up by some 19 uh, percent to some uh, zimbabwean dollar 500 and 96 million zimbabwean dollars let's go back the way we started i mean ali we need to get you to speak to the uh pmi purchasing managers index from south africa which fell to 50 points reading what's what's your understanding of uh, the manufacturing space in south africa given what we're seeing around uh government's uh, measures to manage covid 19 effects so, so i so i think you know the south african government has actually been uh, uh quite innovative in the measures it's taken but it's still facing a very intractable problem. And we go back to the COVID situation where we've had the coronavirus spike last week to record highs in terms of infections. In fact, daily infection rates uh, are about 60% higher than they were in wave one. Um, uh, you know, the stories, anecdotal stories coming out of many parts of the hospital system is very negative, uh, overwhelmed, etc. One in three or close to one in three uh, test positivity ratio. And therefore, I think, you know, there's been this big debate, can South Africa afford another hard lockdown? Probably not. But really, this is going to put pressure on the manufacturing uh, sector. So I expect 
the PMI to trend into contractionary territory um, in January and probably through February. And I think this is a very tough space uh, for the president. He's between a rock and a hard place. Um, I, the economy can't afford to go for a full lockdown. At the same time, he's got to continue ratcheting up measures to make sure that the healthcare system is not overwhelmed. And I think you've seen that reflected not only in this index, but in the RAND, which has come off uh, from levels of 1460 to around 1540, tends to react very quickly. But to make no mistake, Southern Africa, although South African numbers tend to dominate, if you look at the mathematical increase in numbers, they, they might be looking small now, but they're rising at an exponential pace from Namibia to Mozambique to Zambia, Zimbabwe, that entire region is in a little bit of trouble. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, uh, authorities deal with the matter and how they bring it back under control. Car track to exit the JSC and list from the US NASDAQ. Clever trade, I think. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ, of course, preeminent technology market in the world, probably get a better valuation and an opportunity to tap into more liquidity. Um, and then the SABC return retrenchment process, um, you know, this is a, a symptom of a South African state-owned enterprise disease, I'm afraid, but uh, clearly SABC is now trying to get ahead of the curve, um, uh, uh, downsi da downsizing the human capital footprint. Um, it is a venerable institution, but obviously in, during the Zuma days, um, uh, it lost its way. And I think uh, this is a positive step forward. We'd like to see the same sort of steps in other South African uh, businesses like the airlines, for example. Also, let me pick your brain on SABC's uh, 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 suits to take or plan to take the, the governments to court over the ban on the sale of alcohol. Um, if they win that case, what do you think will become of the economy and, of course, this manufacturing uh, companies that you have there? And of course, by in turn, how will it affect the PMI for January per se? I think the uh, the brewing industry in South Africa contributes to uh, the GDP in a very uh, strong sense as part of the manufacturing uh, industry, just a subset of it. Uh, and and if appetite of uh, folks to consume alcohol is being strongly constrained because of the restrictions around the COVID-19 pandemic that is much of a, a bigger issue. I, I think the government is locked in a battle with the, uh, with the brewers as to how to go. Government wants to save lives. Government will lose revenue. The companies will definitely downsize. They will lose revenue, income. Uh, it will affect the shareholders at the end of the day. The, the entire value chain all the way down will be will be impacted. So uh, even Joshua knows that even the banks that lend to the brewers would also take some <laughs> would take some beating as well at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. If it happens in Nigeria, then you can imagine what uh, Nigerian breweries, IBL, and the rest of them will be. So the banks, the, you know, the brewers have cash flow. If you know, they have cash flow. Nigerian breweries, for example, in Nigeria has cash flow, very strong cash flow. They have enough millions on a daily basis in cash to give to a bank. So that's liquidity that the banks get would also be greatly uh, impacted when you have brewers like Guinness, Nigerian breweries, IBL in South Africa, if those guys are not uh, bringing daily sales, because this is daily sales, by the way. Folks consume alcohol on a daily basis. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a whole difficult issue that will go down into the financial system, into the banking sector or, uh, as well. Am I, am I correct, Joshua? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Martin. Obviously, all these things affect the value chain, and if you have something like, you know, the liquidity of brewers and um, fast-moving consumer goods in general not bringing in daily cash, then obviously this will affect um, cash flow in the banks. So, yes, you're, you're right. I mean, Joshua and Akintunde, I know that uh, you both deal more on uh, uh listed companies equities specifically what do you make of scenario where you're saying uh card track exiting uh jse in other words they are delisting from there to get listed on nasdaq i know ali explained all of that earlier but you now have accent to it 
delisting from GSE as well, two companies exiting uh, this exchange at the same time. What do you make of such a development and what's your understanding of it? Well, uh, I think the, the, the two companies has the right to uh, exit the exchange if you look at the GSE. Um, uh, contract is in JSC. I think these days companies begin to look at where they could get more visibility. I need there is more liquidity uh, within that particular market if they will have opportunities to raise funds, if they want to go. Uh, South Africa, the GSC is big, mm. but, yet, but the NASDAQ is far much bigger. <laughs> so, um, so if you ask me, uh, better be a a, a big fish in a small pond where well, I will say, well, I don't want to be a bigger fish in a bigger ocean. So I move on to New Horizons uh, for Catrack. I sent you alternative exchange on the GSA, which is like an SME kind of for the Nigerian stock market as well. You can just decide to uh, uh, decide to, to delete from that exchange, perhaps for shareholders' decisions and all of that. So it's a whole lot of stories around companies or issuers entering into a particular market and making an exit at some point. Hmm. And just like Andy mentioned, I mean, the NASDAQ actually promises more value, more liquidity to uh, tech companies. That's why uh, that was the excuse or reason given by Jumia in Nigeria. So I cross off, go offshore and get listed on New York Stock Exchange. Uh, before we go, let's quickly look at what we've got on the North African markets tray here. Uh, Egypt's portfolio uh, flows uh, now recovering, says the IMF. Um, then of course, we've got Kala Holdings to set up some 300 gas stations in three years. Consortium uh, of Moroccan banks invests some 133 million euros in Tangier Alliance. Morocco, 233 billion dirhams of government bonds and uh, banks' portfolio. Uh, Ali, anything to say about the uh, portfolio inflows that has now resumed in Egypt? So uh, Egypt, I think I was just looking at FX reserves were down about 10% year on year. But, you know, as, we've, as I've spoken with Burson before, they are very, very subtle, clever, and able to message the international markets. And I think, you know, portfolio flows will recover quite dramatically for Egypt. The dip was actually, uh, as I said, about 10%. And uh, in, in the current environment, as people look for growth across the, across the globe, I'd expect that... Uh, trend to go into positive territory by the end of the first half of this year. Um, there are very attractive opportunities, not least um, in terms of portfolio allocation because of the uh, positive carry and the stability of the Egyptian pound. Kala Holdings is quite famous. It used to be Citadel Capital, um, a big investor in Sub-Saharan Africa and here in Kenya as well. It's interesting to see that they are taking up uh, President Sisi's call and putting up 300 gas stations over three years. Of course, Egypt has had these tremendous gas discoveries and Sisi's, uh, you know, pointing the entire economy to run it on gas. So that's a positive development, I think. Great, great. Thanks a great deal for that, Ali. Bosin, uh, what are you going to say to what's going on in Egypt? I mean, we've seen uh, the 13.5% uh, increase now in terms of yields for the Treasury bills, especially for the 90-day, the three-month paper. Um, mm -hmm. Anything to say regarding that, or if you want to juxtapose that with what we're having in Nigeria? I think very quickly, the latest on Egypt is the first... Uh, a monetary policy meeting, which is suspected next month. I think that's one of the big stories that Bloomberg is also following for, for Egypt. What will be the interest rate direction? The second point is that inflation is significantly lower, and I'm sure Ali sees this on a regular basis. So inflation is lower in Egypt. The interest rate direction is the next, uh, 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 is the next point of uh, uh, what will be the first the decisions of the central bank on interest rate for the, the first meeting this year. Then inflation numbers are coming through a bit lower than 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 previous. So Egypt is always is the poster boy if you're looking at the continent uh, as it were. Uh, and then uh, finally, for me on the Moroccan banks holding uh, the uh, uh, government bonds, I'm sure uh, Joshua knows how much Nigerian banks are holding of uh, treasury bills and other and other papers. It looks like a, a no-brainer these days because everybody looks thinks that the best person to lend money to is the government. Who else can print money? No one else. I can print money. I can print money. <laughs>
never can say of Ali, actually. <laughs> okay, Joshua, let's hear your thoughts as to uh, market outlook for this week, I mean, in Nigeria, and if you like, uh, some other parts of West Africa. Well, I think what we've seen, um, especially in the Nigerian market, you know, after the highs of, of the end of, of, um, of December, we were still sort of seeing, you know, a little bit of profit taking as, as you would expect. Now, will that continue, you know, in this week? There's a, there's a high possibility of that. But I think that, you know, overall, it's not really a, a switch in sentiment. It's just investors really taking advantage of some very, very, you know, good, good capital gains that we'll see in December. So I think that's mainly what we can expect for the rest of, of this week. I mean, Ali mentioned earlier that in the uh, East African climate, in Kenya specifically, there, there's been, there, we will be having more of a uh, profit warning. Do you think we'll be having the same thing in the Nigerian markets? Well, I think if we're going to have those, they would have already happened by now. To some extent, you know, sure, some of the consumer goods sector companies and even the oil and gas companies, you know, would have, would, would have sort of, reduced earnings and maybe lower profits mm. but to you know issue a profit warning is you know to say to your investors that look we think things are going to be pretty bad just brace yourselves yeah. and i don't think it's gotten to that that point especially not in the banking sector you know because obviously financial services have been able to sort of manage themselves quite well due to the fact that you know a lot it's very big chunk of their revenue comes from you know non-interest income and non-interest activities. So I think that that really props them up in that situation. So for your FMCGs, what we've seen in Q2 and Q3, I think is the worst of it for 2020. Q4, I think was, was pretty good. There was increased activity and, you know, there was definitely a lot of demand, although inflation, you know, took a, a massive jump. But I think overall profits should still be okay in the FMCG space, even in the oil and gas space because of the deregulation of that sector for the um, downstream, for the upstream, you know, prices have been stable, you know, and they've gotten better even re recently. So I think overall, they should be pretty, it should be okay, not too bad. One thing that surprises me is actually the fact that not a lot of financial or banks, banks across the world heeded the advice of Kristalina Jajiva of IMF that said, or that recommended that companies should withhold uh, their profit or dividends uh, for the year 2020 uh, so they can have some retained earnings uh, in their metrics. But I mean, we'll see how that affects companies by the time their earnings start trickling in uh, this January and uh, Q1 2021. Thank you so much, Joshua Odebisi, a banking analyst at Vetiva uh, Capital Management. Uh, we lost Akintunde uh, Suleiman's connection earlier. He joined us earlier. He's a research analyst uh, with uh, Greenwich Merchant Bank. And of course, Ali Kansachu, chief executive and founder of Rich Frontiers Management in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much for your insight on the markets. Bosina Mofaye. Uh, the executive editor and chief executive of Frontier Africa Reports. I appreciate your time and your analysis. Pleasure. Thanks a great deal. I'm Temple Asha, just signing off right now from Frontier Opening Bell. Do have a profitable day and a profitable week ahead. Thanks for now. Bye.